Are you taking the SAT and need to know more about it? How long is the SAT? Don't worry, I got your back. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Patel, the founder of Transition, and we've helped thousands of students with test prep, and I'm looking forward to helping you. Before getting started, please press subscribe if you're interested in learning more about college and career topics. Our videos cover everything from college essays, to applying to internships, to getting into college. In this video, I cover how long is each section of the SAT, how long are SAT breaks, the start and end times for the SAT, how much time you should spend on each section, how to prepare for the length of the SAT, what to bring to the test, how to plan for the day of the test. Let's get started. The Scholastic Aptitude Test, SAT, is important for admission to college. It's also notoriously challenging, but it's not just the content that makes the SAT tough, it's also the fact that the test is three to four hours long and can be mentally draining. Plus, you have to answer a lot of questions in that three to four hours, and many students have a hard time completing all of them. So in this video guide, I'm going to talk about how long the SAT is, how to pace yourself, and how you can build the stamina you need to power through the test. First, how long is each section of the SAT? You can take the SAT either with or without the optional essay. In most cases, it's best to sign up for the optional essay since a lot of schools do require it. Without the essay, the SAT is three hours and 15 minutes long, including breaks. With the optional essay, the SAT is four hours and five minutes long, including breaks. Here's a breakdown for each section. Math is the only section that's divided into two parts. For one portion, no calculators are allowed, and for the second part, you're permitted to use an approved calculator. All right, so how long are SAT breaks? If you sign up to write the essay, you'll get three breaks. If not, you'll have two breaks during the exam. The breaks are as follows. A 10 minute break between the reading section and the writing and language section, a five minute break between the two math sections, a two minute break after math calculator if you're staying for the essay. All right, so what should you do during your breaks? The breaks are your chance to catch your breath, rest your mind, and recharge. I take that very seriously, and so should you. None of the breaks are extremely long, but be sure to take advantage of them. As tempting as it may be, don't spend your breaks agonizing over any questions or trying to analyze how you're doing so far. It's already passed. Let the past be the past. You're supposed to be taking a break. Focus on what you can do right now. The length of the test can be grueling, and you need these breaks to help you stay focused and refreshed throughout. Remember that the breaks get shorter as the test goes on. During the two minute break, before the essay, you won't be allowed to leave the room. It's a quick stretch break at your desk. So be sure to use the restroom during the five minute break between the math sections. Aside from using the restroom, you can use your breaks to drink water, eat a snack, and walk around a bit to stretch your legs and rest your mind. Try to bring some brain-boosting snacks like fruits or nuts. Avoid sugary snacks that can set you up for a crash. And remember to follow the rules during breaks. Don't talk about the test, and don't try to access any of your devices, like your cell phone. Even though it's a break, your test may be invalidated if you're breaking the rules. So what time does the SAT start and end? At all SAT test centers, doors open at 7.45 a.m. and close at 8 a.m unless another time is noted on your admission ticket. Once testing has started, you won't be allowed in and will have to reschedule or re-register. Rescheduling is much cheaper. Testing will start between 8.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. The test coordinator will read all testing instructions from a manual, answer any questions related to testing procedures, and then tell you when to start and stop working on each section. There may be slight variations on when the test ends, depending on how long it takes to review instructions and other factors. In general, you can expect to stay until around noon if you aren't writing the essay and around 1 p.m. if you are completing the essay section. So here's a short answer. The SAT starts between 8.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. and typically ends around 12 or 1 p.m. depending on whether you're writing the essay. So how much time should you spend on each SAT question? You might think you can answer this question by dividing the number of questions per section by the amount of time you have to answer them. But it's not that simple. Let's take a look at how you should pace yourself on each section of the SAT. Reading is first. 
The reading session is 65 minutes long and consists of 52 questions. More important, it contains five passages and each one has associated questions. On average, you should spend 13 minutes per passage. This includes reading the passage and answering the questions that accompany it. If you want a few minutes to review at the end, aim to spend around 12 minutes per passage. It's best to dedicate about five of those minutes to reading the passage. Passages are 500 to 750 words long. Spend much more time and you risk running out of time on those questions. Spend fewer than five minutes reading and you may overlook the information. All right, next up is writing in language. The writing in language section is 35 minutes long and consists of 44 questions. These questions are spread out over four passages. The writing and language passages are shorter than the reading passages, 400 to 450 words. Try to spend eight minutes per passage, allowing about three minutes for review at the end. Math, no calculator. The math, no calculator section consists of 15 multiple choice questions and five grid in questions. You have 25 minutes to answer these 20 questions. An equal division of time would give you 75 seconds to answer each question. However, it's important to note that this section is arranged in order of difficulty with the most challenging questions coming at the end of the section. For that reason, it's a good idea to spend 60 seconds on each question when possible, allowing slightly more time for the most difficult questions. Let's go on to math calculator. The math calculator section is also arranged by order of difficulty with the most challenging questions appearing at the end of the section. You have 55 minutes to complete the section and it consists of 30 multiple choice questions and eight grid in questions. An equal division of time would give you 80 seconds per question with about four minutes to check over your answers at the end. When possible, try to spend closer to 65 to 70 seconds on each question so that you can devote more time to the more complex questions at the end. All right, so with all that said, how do you prepare for the length of the SAT? The content of the SAT is difficult, but one of the most challenging aspects of the exam is the grueling length and the stamina required to complete it. So how can you increase your focus, concentration, and stamina for the four hour exam? Well, the process is similar to increasing your stamina for a sport. You have to practice. Take full length timed practice SAT test. Even practice test breaks. You'll get used to the structure and format and you'll get a feel for how to pace yourself on exam day. Time yourself on individual sections too. This way you can identify areas of weakness and brush up on the sections where you need the most practice. You can devise strategies to help you speed up and maintain your accuracy on the sections that give you the most trouble. Have a plan. Make a plan for what you'll do if you get stuck on a question or if you start to feel overwhelmed during the test. For example, you might take a few deep breaths. Remember that very few people will answer every question correctly. After more than a minute or so has passed, you'll need to move on. Once you move on, don't spend time dwelling on the last question. Focus on one question at a time. By practicing taking a full length test, getting your pacing right, and working on strategies to help you stay in the zone, you will build stamina and the ability to work under pressure. Remember, diamonds are created under pressure. Okay, so how long are SAT 2 or SAT subject test exams? The SAT subject tests are all hour long exams. All questions are multiple choice, but the number of questions varies. For instance, the literature exam is about 60 questions long, while the world history exam consists of 95 questions. However, you can take up to three subject tests during one testing session. If you take multiple tests, you do get a five minute break between each one. So what should you bring with you to the SAT and SAT subject test exams. Whether you're taking the SAT or an SAT subject test, you should bring the following. Your admission ticket, photo ID, two number two pencils with erasers, an approved calculator if your test will include math, water and snacks, remember, choose healthy snacks, and of course, a watch. If you're taking an SAT subject test with a listening test, you may be expected to bring an approved CD player but do not bring your cell phone, any recording device or personal computing device like a tablet or a laptop, cameras or other photographic equipment, a separate timer of any kind. If you absolutely must bring a cell phone, like for instance, to contact a parent to pick you up when the test is finished, turn it off and leave it inside a bag, backpack or purse until your test is complete. Please do this and don't check on it, even during breaks. If it makes a noise during the test, your test could be invalidated. And that's a lot of time, 
money, and studying that goes down the drain. How should you plan your day for the SAT test? If you're like most people, you'll be feeling nervous the morning of the test. It happens to everybody. Planning ahead can help you reduce some of your test day jitters. The day before. Don't study the day or night before the test. By now, you know what you're going to know. Let your brain rest, and in addition, plan in advance for how you'll get to the testing site. It's even a good idea to drive to the site to see how long it'll take you to familiarize yourself with the route. If you'll need to leave extra time to find parking or to locate your testing room in the building, plan for that as well. And that's also useful advice for an interview. Eat a healthy and filling dinner, like pasta, rice, vegetables, and potatoes. And drink lots of water too. Organize your bag or backpack the day before the test with all the materials you'll need, and then remove the materials you won't need. Double check that you've packed your admission ticket, your ID, some pencils, and a calculator if needed, and ideally a banana or a healthy snack. Set your outfit the night before, giving you one less thing to worry about in the morning. It's a good idea to bring a sweater in case the testing room is kind of chilly. The day of the test, wake up and give yourself time for a nutritious breakfast. Breakfast is always a good thing. Good options include eggs, toast, fruit, oatmeal, yogurt, and or a bagel. Get to the testing center early and leave yourself time to settle in instead of feeling like you're scrambling all morning under pressure. While you wait, take deep breaths and remember all the preparation you've put in. You got this. Plan to leave the testing center at around 12 or 1, depending on whether you're writing the essay. Don't make solid after-test plans any time before 1 or 2, however, since some tests may run slightly later in case of difficulty. The SAT can feel too long and too short. If it's difficult to stay focused and high performing for several hours straight, it can also be a struggle to get every single question. So it's always helpful to familiarize yourself with the length and ideal pacing of each section, take full length time practice test, time yourself on each individual section as well, develop calming strategies to help you stay focused during the test, plan ahead to make your test day run as smoothly as possible. Take full advantage of your breaks on test day. Follow my strategies and you'll maximize your ability to answer questions both correctly and efficiently. I've got confidence in you. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about how long is the SAT. If you like this video, please press subscribe. We have a lot more videos on college and career topics in coming. Now it's your turn. In the comments, tell me any questions you have when applying to college. I'll try to get back to you and give you some helpful advice. Okay guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video.